Greetings and salutations my dearest friends, my name is Samantha and today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite historical romance series. I'm going to be doing a series breakdown on the Wicked Wallflower series by Christy Caldwell. Hi, hello, how are you? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is another episode, a little installment of a series that I'm doing on my channel where I pick some of my favorite book series and kind of break them down, go over each synopsis, let you know which one is my favorites, so on and so forth. This specific video was actually inspired by the current historical romance readathon that is going on right now that is hosted by like my favorite people on booktube, Jessica from Peace Love Books, Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers, and Lisa from Remarkably Lisa. They host a readathon where they read historical romance and it's going on right now. On Instagram, they had a couple of different prompts like your TBR, your favorite Julie Garwood, a picture of books with flowers. And I really wanted to do kind of like daily videos following some of those prompts. So today's prompt was talking about your favorite book series or your favorite historic romance book series. So I thought it was perfect to kind of add an extra video to this little series that I'm doing. If you guys have not seen my previous videos, I already did two series breakdowns of two of my other absolute favorite historic romance series, the Wallflower series by Lisa Klebus and then the Destiny series by Beverly Jenkins. So I will leave that down below if you are interested. Today we're going to be talking about the Wicked Wallflower series by Christy Caldwell. There are five total books in this series. It is a historical romance series set around the Regency era. All of these books are available obviously in a physical format but also on Kindle Unlimited if you have that subscription. Not only are they available on Kindle Unlimited but they're also available with the audiobook. Christy Caldwell also has dozens and dozens of other historical romances so if you enjoy this series you have plenty more books to just dive right into okay i would say you definitely have to read these books in order our series follows the caloran family the people who work for them and there is a subplot in this book that kind of continues throughout the story i do feel like you would be a little bit lost if you were to pick up like the third or fourth book and read them out of order the only book that i will say stands as a standalone and you can read it completely on its own and understand what's going on is the spitfire which is the last installment of the book only because this follows someone outside of the Cloran family and the subplot that's kind of going on in this series has already been resolved so I definitely think this can be considered a standalone All right, but I will go in order when I explain the book. So the first one is The Hellion. This follows the youngest Cloran sister Cleopatra. She is heavily involved with her family's business. Her family owns a gambling hell. Her brother ends up taking control over all of the operations and he really cares for his sisters. He's determined to marry one of his sisters to a nobleman, someone that is a higher class class in London so that they can have status and wealth outside of the illegal activities they get involved in. Heroin ends up staying with a family that owes her a favor but this family owns a rival gambling hell and they have always not gotten along. It's not been a good situation. It's a little bit of an enemies to lovers Romeo and Juliet retelling. Hero in this book, his name is Adair and he does not trust Cleopatra as far as he can throw her. So she does end up staying with her family because of the favor that they owe her and he becomes like her self-appointed bodyguard and like follows her, makes sure she doesn't get in trouble and they form a romance and it's so cute and so steamy. This is like true enemy silvers. Like they really do hate each other and I just love it. I love the Romeo and Juliet vibes. I love the side plot, the side characters. Next up is the Vixen. This follows the middle Cloran sister. Now I will say, this book, you definitely have to read the trigger warning. Heroine in this book has flashbacks of sexual assault, not from our hero, like from her past. There is also mention of like child abuse and kidnapping in this book. A lot is going on in this book. It's a little heavier than the first one. I do still think it is a great book but if you have any trigger warnings I definitely would recommend reading the Goodreads reviews. Okay so this follows Ophelia Kaloran. Like I said she's the middle sister. And she works in her brother's gambling hell but she really has taken it upon herself to kind of save children from the streets. She came from the streets and had dealt with so many hard things in her past. So she really wants to help, you know, children who are left in the streets of London. She brings them into the gambling hell, gives them employment, gives them food and clothes. Hero, his name is Connor, and he used to be involved within the gambling hell and like a lot of the illegal activity that used to take place. But he was one of the very few people who made 
his way out and kind of made a better life for himself. He became a detective. This is a second chance romance. Connor ends up coming across Ophelia because he is a private detective and he is hired by a nobleman to kind of follow this case of missing children. And because Ophelia is helping the gambling hell and taking in all of these children, they end up working together. So this one is a really good one. Like I said, it's a little bit heavier than the first one. It's a second chance romance, which I absolutely love and historical. That was a good one. I think I ended up giving it maybe four stars just because it was a little heavy for me personally and I just adored the first one a little bit more. I still think this is a good part of the series and very instrumental to like the side plot that's going on in the book. I forget what the side plot is because I feel like that's a spoiler. So anyways, the next one is The Governess. This follows the brother of the Cloran family, the eldest brother who is the leader, and his romance is with Reggie Spark, who is an employee of his gambling hell. She's kind of like a governess, hence the title. She takes care of his younger siblings. She kind of helps him with his ledgers, and she's one of like the very few women that he really trusts. So it's a little bit of a friends to lovers in the beginning, but Reggie has the intention of creating her own business. She has dreams of opening up an opera house. She decides to kind of branch out and open her own opera house, but our hero gets real upset because he thinks that she is stealing from him and that she is trying to create like a rival gambling hell to be competitor to him. So it turns into like an enemy sliver situation. They have a very like back and forth scenario. I love our hero so much. You get to see him within the first and second book, like how protective he is of his sisters. And it's just so satisfying to see him get his romance. Next one is The Blue Stocking. This follows the eldest sister of the Kaloran family. This one, uh, it's so hard to explain this plot without spoiling like the other books. Basically in this book, her youngest brother gets involved in some trouble and he ends up kind of getting snatched by a nobleman who believes he owns some rights to him. So our heroine wants to get her brother back. So she ends up like, disguising herself as a governess for this nobleman's house so she can save her brother but obviously she ends up having a romance with the hero. The hero is Lord Edwin. He, I think he's the only titled hero in this whole series. Oh no 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 the next book we have a titled hero as well. Anyways, so our hero is Lord Edwin and he is a little mad. His wife and his son were killed in a house fire and he went a little bit crazy because of that. So this one does have like a little bit of a Beauty and the Beast vibe. Our heroine is a little bit older and I just... I really do love this one. I haven't finished it. I still have a couple chapters only because this is the only book in the series left. Like I have read all the other ones and I'm like cherishing this one because I love it so much and I love this whole series like I don't want it to end. I know that's a little ridiculous especially because I'm doing a whole video on this series but I've read the majority of it. I just haven't like finished the last couple chapters because I am savoring it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Last and final book, and my favorite in the series, is Spitfire by Chris Caldwell. <laughs> this is the last book in the series, and I have talked about this book time and time again on my channel because it's truly one of my favorite historical romances. I have a reading blog where I read this book. I'll leave it down below. So it follows our heroine, who is a prostitute, a Madden of the Night if you will. And she ends up meeting our hero and saving him because he is jumped in the streets of London and badly beaten. So she saves him and kind of nurses him back to health. Our hero ends up being a duke but she doesn't know that when she saves him. So they end up parting ways and they cross paths again because our hero works in parliament where he passes laws for the city of London and he ends up passing a law to shut down her opera house. Our heroine in this book actually works with our heroine in this book and they're opening the opera house together. That's how it ties the stories together. And she is real mad that she's getting this cease and desist letter to close her opera house. So she marches down to the Duke's office and their romance ensues. Our hero is a virgin hero which I love, I stan, I adore, my favorite trope ever when it comes to historicals. It's just completely enthralled with our heroine and I love how like passionate and like confident she is. She is such a unique heroine. One of my favorites. If I were to recommend any book in this series, it would be this one. Okay, I know it's the last one, but like I said, you can read it as a standalone and it is so good. I adore 
all of these books but if I were to pick favorites it would be these two the first and last book so it started off really good and ended really good this series so the Spitfire and the Hellion are my favorites if you can hear like doors squeaking and opening it's just like the house ghost you know just bothering me while I'm trying to film Anyways, so if I were to recommend another Christy Caldwell book, if you guys have already read the series, I would recommend In Bed with the Earl. It is the first book in the Lost Lords of London series. Now this one was really interesting. Our heroine is a reporter and she ends up writing a story about this lost Earl. This Earl has been hiding in London this entire time, the underground of London, and she exposes him that he is this lost Earl everybody has been looking for. Our hero in this book is furious. He is so mad about this article that was written about him. It has nothing to do with the earldom. He built a life for himself in the underbelly of London. He's this like rich powerful man in the underbelly of London, but now that he's an Earl he can't hide behind that title. So going to our heroine and finding out that she wrote the report and they kind of end up having a little bit of a marriage of convenience and it follows their story. So yeah, if you're looking for another Christy Caldwell book to read, I did like this one. I think I gave this one three, four stars. Not my favorite in comparison to the series I already talked about, but it is still really good. Guys, that is it. Let me know what is your favorite historical romance series or if there is a series that you want me to read and do a video on, I would love to do so. As always, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. It means the world to me. I hope you guys are all staying happy and healthy and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!